Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. I hope you're having an amazing day wherever you are. So today we're going to be filling out form I-765 together, which is the application for employment authorization. Uh, the card expiration date for this form is July 31st, 2022. Submitting this application is completely optional. You totally don't have to if you're not planning to work while waiting for your green card. So let's get started. Again, you will be starting here. Uh, please type or use a black ink pen. Any areas that you are not able to fill out in uh, this format right here while typing, you can always fill them out in the black ink pen later after you print this document. Okay, so uh, part one reason for applying so here you will select whether or not you are applying for initial permission to accept employment replacement or renewal so a couple of notes here is you will be selecting initial permission to accept employment for any kind of employment authorization under a new visa category so for example if you had an employment authorization on your opt for example and now you are applying for employment authorization uh, through your adjustment of status application you will still be selecting initial permission to accept employment and um, if you for example have been waiting for your green card for a while and you have applied for this before and your employment authorization did expire and your green card is still not here you will obviously be uh, submitting this option 1c because you will be renewing uh, your permission and you will have to attach a copy of your previous employment authorization document uh, option 1b is for replacement of lost or stolen uh, or damaged employment authorization document you will have to pay the full filing fee however if your employment authorization document came in and there was an error there that was not your mistake that was a uscis mistake you do not have to uh, submit a new form 765 and you also do not have to pay a filing fee you will just have to read the instructions uh, of this form to see what you have to do for that later however if you are applying uh, as part of your adjustment of status application most likely you'll be selecting option 1a moving on information about you this is asking about your name and if you have ever used any other names so uh, Jane is married now to a US citizen but she actually never changed her name before uh, so she doesn't have any additional names so we can just put not applicable to all of these areas moving on to part two information about you right here you will provide your us mailing address and it asks is your current mailing address the same as your physical address you can say yes and obviously if you typed no you will have to provide a another uh, physical address where you're actually uh, currently living if it's different so other information it's asking for your alien number and uscs account number so jane is applying for this uh for the first time and she actually does have an alien number from an opt that she used to have and um there isn't necessarily a um rule so basically uh, once you apply for an employment authorization uh, you will most likely receive a new alien number because you're applying under a new uh, visa category like adjustment status for example so uh, it is very likely that you will receive a completely different alien number however if you already have an alien number from your opt for example um, you can provide it anyway uh, and uh, jane does not have a uscis account number okay gender marital status married have you previously filed form i-765 um so here um you can answer yes if you have ever filed um if you have ever uh, filled out this form before so you can say yes because she used to have an employment authorization for her opt a while ago so moving on this question 13 a and b are asking if uh, you have a social security card issued ever to you and jane has when she was here as a f1 student before and she will input her social security number here and moving on if you 
have never had a social security card issued to you, you have an option to receive a social security card. And actually, um, if you don't have a social security number and you want a social security card, um, it is a good idea to select yes over here uh, because this will kind of speed up the process a little bit for you. In order to be able to accept employment in the United States, most employers will, will most likely ask you to provide a social security number and um, if you don't have one, you're going to have to apply for it. And um, once you have your employment authorization document, you can go ahead and apply for a social security number. However, it might take a long time. So applying for a social security number here in this application will speed up the process a little bit and you will not be wasting um, precious time so because jane already has a social security number she doesn't have she doesn't need one so she'll select no and we'll skip to the next question however if you do choose to apply for a social security card um, you will have to select yes here uh, as a consent to disclosure of your information to the Social Security Administration. Because we selected no, we can uh, skip to item number 18A, but if you do apply for a Social Security card through this application, you'll have to provide this information here. And this is not applicable to us, so we'll just have to say not applicable. Okay, moving on. Your country of citizenship or nationality, a place of birth, moving on, information about your last arrival in the United States. So form I-94 will have a uh, arrival departure record number and uh, you can find your form I-94 if you follow the link in the description box of this video or you can just Google I-94 and the first link that appears on the screen, you will just have to put in your name, date of birth and your passport number and it will give you a summary of your i-94 uh, your passport number is asking for your most recently issued passport if you have updated your passport obviously provide the most recent one travel document number not applicable country that issued your passport or travel document expiration date date of your rest last arrival to the united states place of your last last arrival so this would be uh, the port of entry and it was new york uh, immigration status at your last arrival so she was an f1 student your current immigration status or category again she is currently still a f1 student and if you were an f1 student you are familiar with what service a number is and that will be listed on your i-20 form so you will put in your service number in here okay eligibility category so this uh, can seem very complicated however in the instructions of this form you will be able to see what your eligibility category is there's a lot of different eligibility categories however anyone who is adjusting their status will have eligibility category c Nine. with some exceptions that if you are adjusting your status from an asylee or a refugee your eligibility category may be different so you should check out the form instructions okay stem opt eligibility category you would need to provide the information here and because we're applying as now adjustment of status applicant we obviously uh, this does not apply to us anymore, even if we had an OPT uh, before, but we're not applying for an OPT employment authorization, okay? Even if we had one before, now we're in a completely different category. So right here, you'll just put not applicable. Moving on, again, this does not apply to us, so we're just going to say not applicable next these are all these different other legibility categories we'll just put not applicable in all of these areas and finally part three is the statement contact information so jane can read and understand english i've read and understood every question if you've used an interpreter or a preparer you will obviously select this phone number here any other phone numbers email address and right here you'll select if you're a salvadorian guatemalan national eligible for these benefits it doesn't apply to us and right here you'll sign in black ink pen when you print it out and put in your date again if you used an interpreter you'll put in their information here 
this does not apply to us so we will just put not applicable and additional information page may be used uh, for any kind of additional information but because we didn't have to provide any we're just going to leave this blank so this is it. This is the end of the i765 application. Uh, check out my uh, all about i765 and i131 videos where I uh, talk in more detail about any additional information that you might want to know for these forms. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I hope to see you in my next videos. Bye!